Hey, hey, hey guys, and welcome to Build the Business You Love. I am Z, and I am back with another video. And this one is about SOPs, right, in business, especially in small businesses, because um, for some reason, we think that we don't need certain things because we are a small business. But oftentimes, we actually need a lot of the concepts that apply to larger corporations. And I believe that SOPs are one of them. So let's get into it. So what is an SOP? An SOP stands for a Standard Operating Procedure. Okay. And today we're going to talk about SOPs in respect to um, an events-based business, because that's what you know I mentor on, and also uh, a t-shirt business, just so you can actually understand the concept of a service-based business versus uh, a non-service-based business, right? And uh, you can get an idea of what goes into it. So basically, an SOP is sort of like a set of instructions. It's sort of like a guide um, for a specific task or activities, right? So it's like a, a game guide or a recipe that tells you exactly what to do step by step. So sometimes you'll see like, you'll go to like McDonald's. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. You go to like McDonald's and you're like, how, do, how does this flow so smoothly, right? How do they know to how much fries to put in? How do they know exactly um, when to take them out? How do they know exactly um, how many, I don't know, burgers to put into that thing that you see that they use um, or burgers to put on on the, the grill? How does, and I must be hungry because I'm thinking about food examples. Um, how does Chipotle, you know, work their stations? Usually you'll have one person at the register, one person uh, fulfilling the order along the, that line where you put the taco or the, you know, the cheese or the protein uh, whatever it is that you're adding to your burrito. Um, and then you'll have someone over on the other side taking online orders and fulfilling those. You'll have someone in the back, right, who's chopping up some stuff, and you'll have someone on the grill. So how do they come up with all of these standard operating procedures to make sure that their business runs smoothly? And I believe that it's because, you know, you actually have to know what goes into your business. You have to know the step-by-step. -step. That's why I'm a big fan of actually doing the business yourself, at least for the first year, so you can understand the steps that goes into your business. Otherwise, you can miss something, right? So it's about being consistent, right? It's about being consistent every time. That's why a lot of people, when they go to McDonald's, they know how the burger is going to taste. When they go to Chipotle, they know exactly how things are going to be presented, right? Because it's about that consistency. And it's really important uh, consistency in your business because say, for example, you want to go on vacation or you just want to step away, right? It's a great idea to have things in place so, th so that you're able to have a game plan. And it really helps everyone that's involved. It helps them to understand their roles. It helps them understand the processes. It helps them to make sure that everything goes smoothly without any hiccups, right? So it's sort of like having a roadmap that guides you through each step to make sure that everything is consistent every single time. So I am going to get into an SOP for, let's see if I can make myself smaller here. I am going to get into an SOP example for uh, an events-based business and also for a t-shirt business, okay? So we're going to do the events-based business first and the SOP for the, um, the uh, events-based business. So you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like, right? So uh, for an events-based business, you know, you should have some outline protocols, right? Say, for example, um, you want to make sure that your booking goes smoothly, right? If you want to make sure that your booking goes smoothly, maybe you'll have some a protocol where the client has to complete the the uh, contract online. They have to complete some required fields. Maybe um, they have to uh, make sure that they understand the setup and the timing that they 
are agreeing to. Um, they have to sign certain things, right? Maybe you'll put in your SOP for your event space that they have to have a retainer and uh, a final payment, and you have to indicate when that final payment will be. Um, the security measures that's involved in the um, the actual event, like what type of security will be there, um, some pre and post event procedures, right? You want, want to have standards for these things. Maybe you want them to take out the garbage. Maybe you want them to not bring bottles into your place because the bottles are heavy. Or maybe um, you're telling them, hey, during the, the event, you can't have any liquor, right? So these are things that you want to put into place so that um, the staff, the customers, and everyone knows what your recipe is, right? What your procedure is, what's your roadmap. So it's just outlining these things. So if in the event that you're not there, things can still go smoothly, right? The last thing you want to happen is if someone say books in person, for example, and you're not there, and maybe you have your, your attendant there and they forget a required field, like um, when, when the event is set to end. That could be a big deal because no one knows when it's set to end and people can actually take advantage of that, right? Customers. Um, another thing is it can add the ability to add channels to, for communication to ensure, again, that everything rolls out smoothly. So in the event space world, the, the SOP, the Standing Operational Procedures, are really important to mean sh make sure that you, you know, just maintain consistency. You know the play, you know what's going to happen, and this way you can tell them what's going to happen. So they know what's expected of you, right? When we're talking about, say, a t-shirt business, if we're talking about a t-shirt business, some standard operational procedures that you may want to add is um, how you're going to go about your design creations, right? Maybe you're doing some brainstorming, maybe you're doing some type of digital work, right? And you're showing them proofs, maybe it's hand drawing or whatever it is. What's the approval process like? Do they have to, I don't know, write an email and say, yes, I approve this design? Or do you have something on your website that says, oh, click check this to approve it, right? Does it have to be approved? Is this something that you would, you know, require from your customers? I always recommend in t-shirt business to approve the proofs, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, when we talk about um, t-shirt production, what type of material are you using? Is it different from uh, men's t-shirts versus women's t-shirts? Is the stretchiness of a woman's t-shirt uh, different from the stretchiness of a man's t-shirt? Is it cut differently? So you may say, well, the men's t-shirts look like this. The women's t-shirts are more tapered. You know, you may have that as um, part of your standard operational procedures. You may say, well, uh, we're going to do, you know, a material check. Maybe you'll, are you using screen print? Are you using um, DTF? Are you using transfers? Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you let them know. And in order to let them know, you have to know, right? And I think that, you know, when we include other things in this business's process, like quality checking, printing, inventory management, stock tracking, right? Reordering things online, um, managing all together, customer communication, shipping, even down to the packaging. Maybe, you know, you have a luxury product and that luxury product doesn't use the same packaging as your, um, the, regular, re the regular products that you have, right? So you really need to understand that um, the SOPs can actually make your life easier because it, it allows for a blueprint to be created and for you and your uh, business partners or whoever you have working for you, employees, they can go buy that blueprint. It's no question, right? When we go to, um, like I said, Chipotle, they know exactly what to do. 
when we go to McDonald's, they know what ex exactly what to do. These SOPs are in place so that there is no confusion and that there is consistency within your business, right? And why not make things easier as a business owner? We already have things hard, right? We already have things that pop up out of the blue. Um, we already have, you know, uh, anything can happen, Murphy's Law, when it comes to business, especially small businesses. And it makes your life easier to have certain things in place so that if something happens, for example, if you skip a step, say, for example, the approval in a t-shirt business wasn't uh, completed, then it doesn't move forward, right? If the approval isn't accepted or isn't approved, the, the design isn't approved, then the, the actual um, creation of the t-shirt will not move forward. And this really helped you as a business owner to make it make sense, right? We have so many things we have to think about as business owners. We have to think about budgeting. We have to think about, you know, uh, dealing with customers. We have to think about actually creating the products and managing the products and, and suppliers and, you know, all of these other things that we have going on. We're the customer service person. And you want to make your your life as easy as possible when it comes to uh, managing your business. So this was just a quick one for you guys, just to understand. I do have a free Facebook group. Um, it's called uh, Build a Business You Love. It's called Starting a Small Business. Let me move this out of the way. S Starting a Small Business for Beginners US. So check that out. It's free. Um, I'm going to be delivering all of my YouTube videos right there, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so be sure to check that out and um, be sure to um, to uh, register for that. And also, I am coming out with a small business startup roadmap, guys, from idea to opening. So for you, those of you who don't know what to do, what type of business to start, I have a full on, <laughs> a full on section in this course on how to get your ideas down based on you, based on the things you're interested in, based on your why, right? And how to get that business started the right way in position for funding. So that's coming out pretty soon. I'm looking at um, uh, the beginning of 2024, February-ish. So uh, if you're looking at this after February-ish, hopefully it'll be on my website, which is buildthebusinessthatletterulove.com. Build the business, the letter you love.com. You want to go to courses right here and it should be there. Currently, I just have a course on event space, startup operations and management, and that one is getting rave reviews. So if you want to check that out, you can. And I also have some free guides, guys. So you can check out some free guides and downloads. Um, that's there as well. And I'm filling up this, this website, um, this Build the Business You Love Academy slowly, but be sure to check back with me and check back the, on the website to see what's there. Because, you know, like I always say, they never taught us how to start a business in school. They just taught us how to run someone else's. So I'm really trying to bridge that gap in a really affordable way to show people how to start their businesses the right way. Okay. So I'm Z from Build a Business You Love. And don't forget to subscribe. If you like anything that you heard today, don't forget to subscribe and um, yeah, get those SOPs guys, get them, get your blueprint outlined so that when you're gone, you have to step away from your business, which you should from time to time. Okay. It's healthy step away from your business, then, you know, you know that things are in order. All right. So I'm Z from Build the Business You Love, and I'll check you on the next one.